welcome to this Mass Media's video on the modulus function. To start with, let's take a look at modulus notation. Now the following notation is relevant to the modulus. So the modulus of a number, for example x, is written as x between two vertical bars. Okay, so that would be the modulus of a number, say x, we'd write that as x between two vertical bars. And generally speaking, the modulus of x is equal to x for x being greater than or equal to 0. And the modulus of x is equal to minus x for x being less than 0. Okay. And functions also have a modulus. So for example, f of x equals minus 2. So if f of x is equal to minus 2, then the modulus of f of x, the modulus of f of x, is equal to 2. Okay. And the modulus of f of x is equal to f of x when f of x is greater than or equal to 0. So similar to what we've got here. So therefore, if we write this down here as well, the modulus of f of x is equal to f of x when f of x is greater than or equal to 0. And like we just said here, similar to this, the modulus of f of x is equal to minus f of x when f of x is less than 0. Okay. And finally here, if the modulus is inside the function, so for example f of the, mo of the modulus here, like so, then we apply the modulus to the x value before applying the function. So for example, if we had f of the modulus of minus 4 here, then that would be equal to f of 4. Okay, so that gives us everything we need there for modulus notation. Moving on now to graphs of modulus functions for straight lines. Now there's three types of modulus graphs that you may be asked to draw. The first type is y equals the modulus of f of x. Okay, so the modulus is around the full function. And here, all negative values of f of x are made positive by reflecting the negative section of the graph of f of x in the x-axis. And we know here that this restricts the range to the modulus of f of x being greater than or equal to 0, or a subset within the modulus of f of x being greater than or equal to 0. For example, the modulus of f of x being greater than or equal to 2, for example. Okay. The second type here, and again, let's just change our pen color to highlight this, is y equals f of the modulus of x. So the modulus this time is only around x. And in this case, the negative x values give the same result as the corresponding positive x values. So the graph of f of x for x greater than or equal to 0 is reflected in the y-axis for, neg for negative x values. And our final type here that we may be asked to draw is y equals the modulus of f of minus x. Okay. And here the x values swap sign, i.e. from positive to negative or from negative to positive. So the graph of f of x is reflected in the y-axis and then all negative values of f of x are made positive by reflecting the negative section of the graph of f of x in the x-axis. The range is restricted as well with y equals the modulus of f of x. Now the best and easiest way to draw these graphs is to plot the graph of y equals f of x first and then reflect it in the appropriate axes or axis. So for example here, we just clear the writing that we've got so far. And let's just say then we have a function f of x. Okay, so we have f of x here, which is equal to 2x minus 1. We want to sketch three types now. So we want to sketch y equals the modulus of f of x. So how would we do that? And what would that look like? Well, here, this would look something like this. We just plot y equals f of x first. And we can see that here from this line. So we just go over this here. So this part here is y equals f of x. And what we can see then is the negative section of the line. We reflect that here, okay, with the x-axis. And that extends this part here, okay? And like we can see where it cut through minus 1, it cuts through positive 1 now on the y-axis. Okay, so that's for y equals 
the modulus of f of x. So if we just play everything we've got so far, what about now for y equals f of the modulus of x? So y equals f of the modulus of x. What would this look like? Well, here, this would look like this. Again, we just plot y equals f of x, and then we reflect the line in the y-axis for negative x values. Okay, and again, you should get something that looks like this. And our final type then, which is clear everything again, is for y equals the modulus of f of minus x. Okay, so what would this look like for our function f of x? Well, in this case, we'd get something that looks like this. Firstly, we reflect f of x in the x-axis, and then we reflect the negative section of the line in the x-axis. Okay, we get something that looks like this. So that gives us everything we need there for graphs of modulus functions, specifically straight lines. Moving on now to solving modulus equations graphically. So, to solve modulus equations of the form here, the modulus of f of x equals n, or the modulus of f of x equals the modulus of g of x. Well, we can solve them graphically by using the following method. The first step here is to sketch the graphs of y equals the modulus of f of x. So y equals the modulus of f of x and y equals n on the same pair of axes. Okay. The second step here is to work out the ranges of x for which f of x is greater than or equal to zero and f of x is less than zero from the graph. Okay. So that's our first point there. The next point here is that we want to work out the ranges of x for which f of x is greater than or equal to zero and f of x is less than zero. Okay, and we do that from the graph. And what we do then for our next step here is we use what we've deduced in our second step here to write two new equations and one that holds for each range of x. So we say f of x is equal to n for x being less than or equal to a or x is greater than or equal to b and minus f of x is equal to n for x between a and b okay for step four then we solve each equation in turn and check that the solutions are valid. We remove any that are outside the range of x for that equation. For step five, we check that the solutions look correct by examining the graph, and that would give us our solution there graphically. And just a quick note here, we use the same method for the modulus of f of x being equal to the modulus of g of x by replacing n with g of x there, okay? So that gives us everything we need there for solving modulus equations graphically. Moving on now to solving modulus equations algebraically. So for equations of the form here, so let's just write this down, for the modulus of f of x, which is equal to n, and the modulus of f of x is equal to g of x, then we can solve these algebraically instead of graphically. So for example here, if we want to solve the modulus of 2x plus 2 is equal to x plus 4, well, we break this down into two cases. First, we break this down into positive values and solve for these positive values. So in that case, we take 2x plus 2 and set that equal to x plus 4. And here now we just solve for x, which in this case just simply gives us x equals 2. Okay? And the second case then is we solve for negative values. So here we take minus 2x plus 2, like so, and we set this equal to x plus 4. So here we'd get minus 2x minus 2 is equal to x plus 4 there. Okay? And again, just solving for x here, we get 3x equals minus 6, and finally x equals minus 2. And finally, all we do then is combine these solutions. So therefore, the solutions here. Are x 
equals 2 and x equals minus 2. Okay, so that would give us our solution there to this example. And for equations of the form here, so let's just clear this just so we've gone through. So for equations of the form, the modulus of f of x is equal to the modulus of g of x. Well, it is easier to do this algebraically using the following rule. So if the modulus of a is equal to the modulus of b, then a squared is equal to b squared. Okay, so a squared is equal to b squared. So if f of x or the modulus of f of x is equal to the modulus of g of x, then we can write this as f of x here, all squared, is equal to g of x, all squared. Okay, just applying that here. So for example, if we wanted to solve, so let's say solve um, x minus 1, so the modulus of x minus 1 is equal to the modulus of 2x plus 3. We just apply this rule here. So we square both sides, so we get x minus 1 squared is equal to 2x plus 3 squared. Okay. And what we do now is we expand and simplify. So if we expand the left hand side here, we get x squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay, so that's the left hand side. And if we expand the right hand side here, that would give us 4x squared plus 12x plus 9 there. Okay. And all we want to do now is get this equal to 0. So, for example, if I subtract x squared, if I add 2x and I subtract minus uh, 1 here, so if I subtract 1, then this left-hand side here would be equal to 0. So what that would give us then is 3x squared. So subtracting x squared, we add 2x to both sides. That gives me 14x. And finally, subtract 1 off the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So that would give us plus 8 there. Okay, so this is equal to 0. And all we need to do now is solve this for x. And like always, we check to see if this factorizes, and we find it does. And what we obtain here is 3x plus 2, and this, and then our second product here is x plus 4. Okay, so the second part of that product is x plus 4. And this is all equal to 0. So that gives us two solutions here. Our first solution is when 3x plus 2 equals 0. So that means 3x is equal to minus 2, and therefore x is equal to to minus 2 over 3. And our second solution then is given when x plus 4 equals 0, which tells us x equals minus 4 there. Okay, and that would give us the solution there to our second example. So that gives us everything we need there for solving modulus equations algebraically. And let's just give a concluding note for modulus functions. You can also solve modulus inequalities using these methods. The graphical method of solving inequalities will be particularly helpful since there will often be a quadratic involved. Another rule that will be helpful is given as the following. So the modulus of x minus a is less than b if and only if, so if and only if a minus b or x is between a minus b and a plus b there. Okay, so you might find that particularly helpful as well. Okay, so that gives us everything we need there for our quick note for the modulus function. And that concludes this mass media video on the modulus function.